Okay, section two time once again here, Lancaster Lebanon League Media Day, and here with uh, Dave Hahn from Mannheim Central. How has this off season, you know, treated you, Dave? Uh, it's been great. We've been uh, working hard. Our kids are doing a great job. Uh, we've been going, you know, since December, so we're ready to go. <laughs> Yeah, getting ready to go. I got a chance to see like your seven on seven tournament that you had, you know, around Memorial Day. I mean, that really gets the blood flowing. What do you find is, you know, the advantages of, you know, those seven on seven tournaments that early on? Uh, I think you can work on your passing game, but I mean, and that's a, a great advantage. You work on your secondary coverages, um, but it's it's not real football. I mean, it, we're, we're coming up on real football, so the line matters and they, they take a uh, – they take a big toll on the game, so we'll see what happens. You know, I had a great conversation with uh, Dave Roth uh, from uh, Southern Columbia, and I met him at a 7-on-7, seven seven, and he talked about the fact of they don't necessarily do it for the players uh, that, you know, they're trying to scheme around it, but it's a way that they can play against those kind of defenses, and it's a way that the coaching staff can actually develop their skills in you know defense that way so even though there's no really you know apples to apples comparison offensively there's still a lot of things that they gain you know overall by playing on seven seven do you find the same thing yeah i think uh you, you get ideas through the winter you're going to clinics you're getting ideas you're developing thoughts um you really don't know until you get to put it put it together against a, a different squad um so i think when you can try some of those things that kind of gives you an idea of what works what doesn't work because sometimes what looks good on paper is just a total flop when you go out in the field um so you know i see the advantages of that the one thing that i've seen in seven on seven this year is the the real emphasis on um evaluation i mean i saw so many times everybody's got their you know their drones out there you know, and using it as a way to, like, just look at that picture of what the quarterback is looking at as well. I mean, it's really gone from uh, – the, the level of sophistication in 7-on-7 seven seven now for me is off the charts. What do you think? I think the level of sophistication is, is definitely increased. I think the level of quarterback play around the area is definitely increased. Uh, you know, everybody's doing their quarterback training. You know, so they're they're all top notch kids. They all work hard at it. Um, programs are all developing their offenses around their quarterbacks right now. Um, so seven on sevens are kind of important in that aspect. So of course you're gonna you're going to film it and, and see what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, what can you tweak. Um, so that's the advantage of doing that. Yeah, and uh, so talk a little bit about you know your team. I mean you you are uh, you know runner up here. You know, in the district, I mean, talk a little bit about, you know, how you want to elevate yourself, you know, to a district championship this year. Right. Well, we got we got to worry about section first. Um, I think there's uh, going to be some really good competition in section two. Uh, of course, you know, backyard rivals with Warwick. And I think uh, I think Governor Mifflin and, and uh, Exeter are going to be a great challenge this year. Um, and I also think Consuelo Valley is going to be a little bit on the rise. So. Um, we got to worry about that first, and then we'll worry about districts later. Obviously, we want to make it. To, we want to win a section. We want to make it to districts. We want to. We don't want to just compete. Though we want to win. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a tall task. But you know, somebody's got to do it. So why not us? How is that every year too? I mean, obviously, the Mannheim. You're carrying the torch for the Mannheim Central program. You're a Mannheim Central guy. I mean, that is just such the fabric of, like, you know, what your community is. Talk a little bit about, you know, the pressures involved in, in upholding that kind of standard. Well, you know, I think, there, I think there is pressure, but I think a lot of that pressure is self-induced. You know, I, I, I think there's a lot of, when it comes to our community, there's a lot of support. Uh, our community has an expectation of winning, um, but they're awfully supportive, you know, so – uh, that's that's a great thing. The pressure, like I said, that comes from me. You know, I put a lot of pressure on myself to to make sure that we're providing everything we can for the kids, and that we put them in the best situation to win. Um, and when things don't go well, you know, I'm probably not too happy. You know, whether it's not whether they're playing well or not, it's whether I'm able to get the things uh, for them that they need, and and uh, to be able to navigate some of the roadblocks that we've faced. You know, so th that's where the pressure comes from. 
you have a very unique situation, you know, at home. Um, is there any work-life balance, you know, in between, you know, football and, and obviously, uh, you know, the fact that you're really intimately involved, you know, with the family and football, right? Yeah, yeah. So I guess you're talking about I got my daughter who's the athletic trainer, um, <laughs> and my son is, our, is a senior this year and is our quarterback. Um, and my, my wife works in the school district as well. If you ask me, I think I have work-life balance. I try, to, I try to balance things. I'm sure if you ask my wife, there is no balance. It's all work. It's all football all the time. Um, but uh, when it comes to football, I try, to, I try to keep it down in the office, keep it to the field. Um, you know, Sundays I'll come home. We'll have a game plan. I'll, I'll sit down with Zach and, and talk a little bit about it and see, get his thoughts. Um, other than that, you know, I let our quarterback – coach do his job and coach your quarterback um and then i try to keep the the injury report to you know down at the school you know we don't bring that home because most of the time you know coaches get frustrated when you hear about injuries so um i i save that for the school yeah well that i tell you what uh obviously uh you're a baron through and through, a family, everything else. I tell you what, it's always a pleasure to have some time with you and wish you all the luck in the world this season, all right? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. More interviews to come.